For a millennium, the space for the hotel room existed, undefined. Mankind captured it, gave it shape, and passed through. And sometimes in passing through, they found themselves brushing up against the secret names of truth. Room 603. Welcome to the Railroad Hotel, sir. Thank you. This is for you. Anything else you need sent up, sir? Uh, no, uh, I don't think. <clears throat> uh, Arlene, do uh, you want something, a drink? Darlene, my name is Darlene. Uh, right, Darlene. If you need anything. I got what I need. Uh, no, fella. I'll call down when you need anything. Enjoy yourself, sir. Damn, I asked for double bed, not two singles. <clears throat> you need to use the bathroom? There's a bathroom. service <clears throat> yeah mr. Boca in room uh, wait a minute let's see in 603 how about setting up a bottle of uh, or a fifth Jim Beam bourbon yeah yeah it's got to be bourbon and then there's a big difference and a couple of chimneys Chimney size glasses. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Boca, yeah. <clears throat> I gotta go. We just got here. Uh, in the bathroom. Uh, for the drinks come. You need any help? That's why I'm here. I think it is. I don't know you, mister. How do I know what you think? Want a hit? I oh, don't. No. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, let me think about it. 
You think too much, man, is what I think. What are you thinking about now? Um, the White Knight is about to undertake a dangerous journey through the dark forest. Far out. You're into fairy tales, huh? Sign this, please, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. for now. Okay. Uh, before the White Knight takes out his sword, he has to pay tribute to the Fair Maiden. Who is it? Lou. Lou? What's Lou doing here? Doing here now? Who's Lou? What's this? What are you doing here? I'm doing here now. Can't. You just can't, not now. Did you pay her, Mo? Lou, don't. Answer me, Mo. Lou. Did you pay her yet? Yes. I paid her. From the city, darling? Were you born here? I'm from Iowa. Link Haven, Iowa. Yeah, Lou, who cares where she was born? This is this is not right! Mo, calm down. Your heart, you know. You know what could happen. I was in Iowa once. It must be 19, 20 years ago. Driving through with my late wife, Felicia. Our son, Arthur, was born in, let me see, 1950. This was a year or so before Arthur was born. Felicia hated Iowa, I remember. 
cornfields. Cornfields all through Iowa in summer. It was hot. And we, we had no air conditioning in the car. God damn you, Lou. Are you guys friends or what? <laughs> oh. You shouldn't be talking about Felicia. Not here, not now. It's not right! No, it isn't, Mo. It probably isn't. What should we be talking about, Mo? Yesterday, I read in a magazine about the movie actress, Martine Moustique. You know who she is, Lou? Martine Moustique. She died a couple of weeks ago, a month before her 30th birthday. Yeah, sure. Tall, skinny, broad, with good tits. Did you know that she and Felicia had the same birthday, Lou? The 15th, did you know that? I don't. I don't know if I did or not, Mo. Martine Moustique was not her real name. It was Rima Dot Duguid, and she was born in North Carolina, or Georgia, in some state like that. Turned up in uh, Hollywood. That's where her name got changed. Sure, did the perfume ads for what was it called? Parachute. Paroxysme, Lou. That's French. Paroxysme. Yeah. Then she was found dead in the bathtub of her house in the Hollywood Hills. That's tragic, Mo. I saw Martine Moustique's last movie that came out after her death, The Brave and the Beautiful. She played a Croatian lion tamer named the Great Vukovara. She learns that her lover has been killed just before she must stage a command performance for the Queen of England. But she goes on as scheduled, right? At the end of her act, she tossed aside her whip and chair and ordered the lions to attack her. As the big cats tore the great Vukovara apart, superimposed on the screen was a picture of Martine Moustique at her most beautiful. The way she looked in that ad for paroxysme. And you know what she said her biggest regret in life was? No, Mo. What? That she'd never gotten to be a high school cheerleader. Isn't that too much, Lou? I was a cheerleader in high school there, in Link Haven. That couldn't have been very long ago, darling. Do you remember how to do them? The cheers? Lou, I'm begging you. Darlene, honey, do one for us. Do one of them high school cheers for us. You really want me to? Absolutely. <laughs> California oranges, Texas cactus. We'll play your team just for practice. Give me an R, give me an O. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Give me a C, give me a K. Let's kick their butts today. Give me an E, give me a T. Make them see, make them see, make them see. Give me an S, we're the best. R-O-C-K-E-T-S, rockets. Rockets. Rockets, yay, rockets. Oh, shit, I'm pretty stoned. That was great, baby, great.
pecking you, Lou. You think so, Mo? Isn't Darlene all right? She's all right, Lou. No, I mean it, Mo. I mean she is really all right. It isn't every hooker from New York who can do a cheer like that, let me tell you. I could have been a cheerleader at the university, too. If I'd have gone there. The university of Iowa, I mean. Sure you could have. I didn't, though. I got pregnant, so I stayed home and had the baby. And you left the kid with your mother, and you followed your boyfriend to New York, and he came to be an actor, and he was working as a bicycle messenger. He didn't want me, though, the bastard. So I tried to kill him. Stabbed him four times with a kitchen knife, but he lived. You'd have had a gun, you'd have shot him. I would have blown his brains out. Felicia didn't know which end of a gun the bullet came out of. things, will you? Felicia was a cheerleader, too. I was Felicia. You don't remember? You weren't listening. Arthur's mother, Felicia was Arthur's mother, driving past the cornfields of Iowa. Oh, yeah. Lou's first wife, right? No. My wife. My wife! Felicia was my wife! Not Lou's, not his. He was never even married. Does Lou strike you as the kind of a man a woman like Felicia would marry? That's a fucking joke. Felicia wouldn't even look twice at Lou. He knows that. I've had some strange chicks before, but you guys are weird. You got a game going that I ain't seen before. Game? What do you mean, game? Look, man, just let me get dressed and get out of here. I don't care what's behind it. Do you hear this, Lou? This bitch, this miserable little whore, thinks this is a game. That's what you called it, Lou. I swear it. Darlene, when you stabbed your boyfriend, the father of your child, you didn't intend to kill him, did you? His name! What was his name? Whose name? What the fuck are you guys talking about? Your boyfriend's name, Darlene! Was it Arthur? No. No, it wasn't Arthur. I don't think you darling. I don't want you to leave yet. May, do you want your bed turned down for the evening? Call the cops! These guys are gonna hurt me! Damn it! Uh, don't worry, honey. Everything's all right. Nothing wrong. All right. Uh, here. Take this. We don't need the room fixing. Everything's fine. You want the bedtime, Mills? Oh, thanks. 
is precious. Just close, Mo. Could have happened, Lou. You know, it could have happened. Pass it here. Mo, pass the bottle. Life goes on, Mo. If you're lucky. I felt lucky once. Once when I was a kid, 11, 12 years old. I was delivering Chinese food on a bicycle. Quarter an hour, a dime in delivery, plus tips. The tips were crucial, though. Crucial. I know about Crucial, Mo. I had a third floor delivery on a Sunday night. It was pissing outside, raining hard while I rode, soaking the brown bags. So I go up the stairs, and I can feel the sub gum sauce leaking on my hands from the bottom of the bag. A woman comes to the door, tells me to put the bag down on the kitchen table. Now this woman, she's wearing a pink nightgown, which is half open in front. I can see her nipples through it. She asks me how much she owes and I say $5. I see her cheeks and chin has got purple dust all over. She tells me she'll be right back and goes out of the kitchen. I wait there, look around. There's dirty dishes piled in the sink. And one of the elements of the overhead fluorescent light is burned out. And the whole kitchen is glowing, rose-colored, like the woman's face and her nightgown. You got my interest, Mo. She comes back. She hands me a 20. Will this do, she asks. I dig in my pocket for change, but she stops me. Puts her hand on my wrist. Keep it all, she says. Wow. Yeah. She takes my hand, leads me to the front door where I came in. Now, guess what happens? Give it to me. She puts my hand on one of her breasts. The shit, Mo, the shit. She says, thank you, thank you. Like in a heavy, deep voice, like Lauren McCall, Tallulah Bankhead. She looked like Tallulah Bankhead, except for her hair, which is more like Lauren Bacall's. What did you do? I said, you're welcome. Is that all? She opened the door, and I went out down the stairs. It was still raining, you know. But I stood out there under a Dutch elm tree where I'd left my bike. Stood in the rain for a few seconds, put my hand in my pocket, and felt to see the $20 bill was there. And I remember thinking, If I could just have two deliveries like this, I'd 
day. Just, just to... Mo. Christ, Mo. I'm going now, Mo. You coming? Not yet. Don't wait too long, Mo. Yeah, okay. Remember, don't wait too long. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. So long, Mo. So long, Mo. Who is it? Who is it? Louis Holcheck? What? Are you Louis Holcheck? No, no. No, no, I'm not. Is this your coat? Maybe. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, it must be. Lewis Holcheck's driver's license. Lewis Holcheck's credit cards. Lewis Holcheck's social security card. If you're not Lewis Holcheck, what are you doing with his wallet? It's him. It's his picture on the license. No, you see, Lou was uh, Lou you're was here. arrest for the murder of Felicia Boca. Anything you say may be held against you as evidence in a court of law. Do you understand? Do you understand? I, yes. I mean, no, no. I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand. Room 603, straight ahead. You'll have a lovely view of the station from here. Yes, I remember. I can never decide whether it's very discreet or just very snarky the way you pretend you haven't brought me to this room about a million times. Either way, I won't be back. If I can be of any assistance, please ring for me.
Hello. Tina. Huh? Thank God. No, I haven't. Well, he's not due for an hour and a half. You downstairs? Well, absolutely. Come up. Checking the messages. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. How are you? Mm. <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, can I have some beluga, please? Eight ounces. And shall we get champagne? Absolutely. Why not? Yeah, do you have Tattinger? Great. That's room 603, right away. Thank you. What did you get? Show me, show me. Uh, for you, art and decadence. From Nefertiti to Emily Dickinson. <laughs> And we went to the Americana auction at Sotheby's, and I got the best deal on a fireplace set. I nabbed it for $1,400. Signed, James Davis, Boston, 1798. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to this. The harpies are servants of the furies, airborne pirates befouling men with their droppings. They represent the aspect of femaleness that clutches and kills in order to feed itself. That is disgusting. You know, early American brass has absolutely gone through the ceiling. Tina, I'm getting a little nervous about this nesting instinct of yours. I mean, buying things for your apartment. <laughs> you know, it reeks of spinsterism. You should be investing in clothes while you're single. Buy the housewares after you get the wedding ring. I don't want a goddamn wedding ring. <laughs> I like being single. I like working. I don't understand this matrimonial obsession of yours. How many happily married couples do you know? Personally, I think you've got the perfect relationship. Perfect? He's terrified of commitment. They all are. He lives 3,000 miles away. My dream. I see him once a week at best. Too often. And I don't know what he's doing in the meantime. Hey, my dream mate is Odysseus. <laughs> Off to the wars, honey. Be back in 20 years. Distance is an aphrodisiac. Oh, well, I'm sure that it works for him. Poking every little starlet in Los Angeles in between visits to New York. Come on, you don't know that. Yes, I do. I have the code to his message machine. Ooh, Robert, this is Kimba. I was so worn out I could hardly make it through my audition, you naughty, naughty boy. So what are you going to do about this? I don't know. Come in. I'm going to tell him this is obviously going nowhere, and I don't think he's going to marry me, and I'm sick of being a goddamn bi-coastal concubine, for Christ's sake. Can you put that over there? You're actually going to say the M word. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? I mean... I'm not getting any younger, and I'm not going to keep my looks forever. Plus, my alimony runs out in two years. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> You're not going to keep your looks forever. You better find a husband while you still can. Mm -hmm. You know, children would be nice. Excuse me? You almost killed me. You did that on purpose, didn't you? You know, I don't have to deal with this. I'm going to talk to the manager. It's all right, it's all right. Don't be ridiculous. Thank you. Hello? Hello, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. What do you mean he's not? No, you can tell him to come to room 603 immediately. Thank you. Save your energy for Robert, darling. Come on, let's rehearse this thing. Okay, dry run. Now, I'm Robert, I've just walked in. I take you in my arms. I kiss you, right? Presumably he kisses you, Nespa. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the problem. It's like sometimes Robert is sticking his tongue down my throat and I want to say, please. I mean, 
Kissing is so intimate, you know, and it's like, especially if you're not really in love with the guy, you sometimes feel like saying, all right, fine, go ahead, go on, do your thing, but do not drool all over my face and suck my tonsils out in the process. Really? You're wondering how soon can I get this guy out of my apartment so I can catch Arsenio? Oh, sex can be such a bore. Someday you're gonna call us up raving about this incredible new sensation that you've discovered and we're gonna say, now you know what we've been talking about all this time. Well, it's not like I haven't given it a chance. God, I'll say it. Oh, the virgin speaks. I didn't mean just you. I mean, I was saying, I mean, we've all been around. I was just, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, have some caviar. Mm. We don't want to leave any for Robert. You know, caviar still reminds mm. me of Speed Davis. He used to send me those vats of beluga. Oh, you're lucky. He used to mm. send me his poetry and we're talking serious dribble. I didn't know you knew Speed. How come all the actors I know are suddenly writing bad poetry? Probably the same reason they're all wearing glasses. They think it makes them look smart. <laughs> but we've, we've got, got news for you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, oh. so back to Robert. Oh. Do you kiss him? No, I let him kiss me, but I keep my mouth shut. Good, he notices. Then what? Then, then he tosses his hair with a certain way that he has and um, pushes his hair back from his eyes. Not because it's actually in his eyes, but because he's really proud of his hair and he likes to call attention to it. And it's like this sort of um, gesture he must have seen in a movie or something. And he thinks it makes him look adorably. <laughs> How fetching. I know, he thinks so. So then he'll say, so did uh, somebody die or is it just my breath? And you'll say? I'll say, Robert, it's the fact that you can come up with a line like that that makes me realize I just can't go on with this anymore. <laughs> come on, girls, really. We've got to do this right. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to tell him that we fight too much, and I don't think he loves me. I know he's not ready to make a commitment, and I'm tired of waiting. Do you love him? What if he offered to marry you right now? I consider it. Even though you don't love him? A serious gesture like five or six carats of high grade carbon might rekindle my ardor. But no, seriously, I would probably say too late for you, buckaroo. But wait, haven't you just been telling us all along that the reason that you're getting rid of this guy is because he won't marry you? I get it. There's someone else, isn't there? All right. Who is it? Well, let's just say that you'll both be very welcome to visit us in Southampton, or Aspen, or um, Houston. Well, Houston certainly narrows it down. Well, they're the Bass Brothers, but aren't they spoken for? No, they're Dallas, not Houston. Well, there's Toby Trout, but isn't he gay? <laughs> He's gay. Give. Tom Walsh. I sat next to him at the Whitney Benefit, and we just started talking, and the next thing you know, we were on a plane to Lyford Key. These are really very charming. And he wants to have children. And he's arriving in tomorrow from Aspen. What? What? What is it? Give. At the auction this morning, we ran into Carrie Sachs, and she said that everyone in Aspen was buzzing about the fact that. Go on. Supposedly, Tom and Gina Price flew from Aspen to Reno and got married yesterday. Honey. Bastard. Honey. Shh. He was telling me last week. He was, he was telling me last week that he wanted me to have his children. Gee, honey, I'm sorry. He was gonna, he was gonna take me to Houston to see his mother. And, um, we were gonna get married at Round Hill. Well, obviously he was in a marrying mode. Gina Price is already rich. 
What does she need him for? Certainly that makes Robert a little more attractive. Ugh. Robert's still a jerk. Well, that's what Tina always said. Said what? Said when? <clears throat> are, um, are we talking about Robert? My Robert. It was years ago, before you knew him. I didn't know you knew Robert. I sat there and introduced you over lunch at Primavera, and uh, you just pretended like you'd never laid eyes on each other. I didn't want... I just didn't think that there was any point. I don't believe this. It was nothing. Virtually only, well, hardly more than a one-night stand. Years before you knew him, I didn't think it was a big deal. No, well, obviously to you, it, it wasn't. Oh, that's probably the goddamn manager. Can you get the door, please? Sure. Tina. Hello, Robert. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is Diane. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Oh, careful. <laughs> Sasha is just freshening up. <laughs> Sorry about that night in Santa Fe. Oh, wait a minute. I, I was just going to apologize. No, I shouldn't have left without you. I left without you. Wait a minute. Wait. You mean you dumped me and I didn't even know it? <laughs> You bailed on me for who? Uh, who's on first, guys? <laughs> you're really something, Robert. You're both really something. Robert, you're early. Well, the plane is early, and uh, the car was waiting, and there's no traffic coming in, so... Uh... Can I use the... Sure, go right ahead. It's, uh... It's your room. Uh, time for a graceful exit? <laughs> no, could you just stay just for a minute, please? Are you sure? I don't think I'm ready for this yet. He's actually quite attractive. Are you sure you want to get rid of him? I can't believe you've never met. Although I'm very grateful. I think it's time we should go. No, just Bye. please, five minutes. Bye. So lucky me. Three girls for the price of one. I wasn't aware that you'd been paying for my services. Oh, shit. I didn't mean... <sighs> let's... let's start again. Did I tell you about the hair? It's nice hair, though. Tina! Robert! What a surprise. <laughs> Great to see you. Sasha. Did somebody die or is it my breath? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't smoke. Since when do you smoke? I smoke sometimes. When I'm in the mood. What mood might that be? It's a little chilly in here. Do we leave a window open? You know, I think it's time for Tina and Diane to leave. No, they can stay for one glass of champagne. Robert? Ah, uh, yeah, could you sign up another bottle of champagne? Robert? Make it a magnum. Yeah, thank you. Right away, please. We need to talk, Robert. I'll talk over a glass of champagne. And vino vertas. You lost weight. Hmm. A little maybe. It's called bulimia. So, Robert, tell us about what you're working on. He's uh, got a project with Mel and Michelle. Mel and Michelle, Kevin and Kim, Winona and Johnny. I didn't know about Winona and Johnny. You know, some clear mornings I wake up, say to myself, you don't even make movies, you make deals. Robert. You're very good at what you do. Stop acting like the talent. It's not very becoming. Room service. Hello, Mr. Neal. Hi. Come in. Come in. Come in. Just put it right here. This woman practically took my eye out a few minutes ago. Just leave it all over. 
She deliberately tried to blind me. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. She can be such a... The service here is appalling. Why don't we just have a glass of champagne and calm down? Actually, I've got to go. No, are you sure? Yeah, I'm already late. But, um, call me. It's a new number, 555-2121. It's listed. collect early American brass. Absolutely gone through the could roof, Could we maybe Robert. find you know a topic that? we could all get interested in? How about a toast? Okay. What should we drink to? Old times? That all right, good. that's it. <laughs> Tina, could you please leave? I would like to be alone with my... With Robert. It is getting late. <clears throat> Toodaloo, Sasha. Toodaloo, Tina. So, stall at the Barbizon? Yes. Sasha, there's something I want to say. I do care about you, but we seem to fight all the time. And I don't think I'm ready to make a commitment. And I know you must be tired of waiting, so I think it's probably best if we stop seeing each other. I don't believe this. You are such a bastard. What is it? Is it Kimba? Kimba the Bimba? Hello, Robert. This is Kimba. I was so worn out I could barely make it through my audition, you naughty boy. I'm leaving. What about the trip to St. Bart's? Oh, keep the tickets. Take any one you want. After all this time, I think I deserve an explanation. This is pointless. What is it? Is it my tits? Are my tits too small? What is it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're real. 100% me, 100% organic, which is a hell of a lot more than you can say for most of your 19-year-old starlets. They're very nice. What is it? Is it sex? What is it? Tell me you don't like the way I fuck. If you, if you want it. me to do something differently, I'll do it. That's not it. I'll do it. What is it? I'll change it. What is it? Am I too old? That's not it. That's it, isn't it? That's it. You just want to be Peter Pan, sticking your little wand into the pubescent fountain of eternal youth. Okay. You want to know why? You really want to know why? I'll tell you. Tell me. You're not a nice person. You're a bitch. You got it? You want me to spell it out for you? You're not nice. You're a bitch. B as in, as in bad. I as in egomaniac. T as in terrorist. And C as in... C oh. You're not walking out on me, you bastard. Oh, no? Just watch me, babe. Oh my God, what have you done? You know what he called me? A cunt? Well, no, but he was going to. Uh, uh, uh. Call a doctor.
could somebody send a doctor to room um, 603, please? Sasha. You really hurt me, Robert. I hurt you? Words can really hurt a person. Words. You said I wasn't nice. How can you say that I'm not a nice person? That was so incredibly cruel. Sometimes you can be so callous. And you're about to use the C word. You know how I feel about that word. Hey, if I said anything that hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. I don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> Me neither. Do you mind? We're having a private conversation. Uh, I'll go for help. No, 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 no. Wait. Uh, Would you just leave? Thank you. Oh, oh you poor. Uh, oh, oh. God. Mm. Oh, God. Do we have any, do we have any tile and all? What time is it? What time is your screen? Uh. Watch out for the carpet here, the edge of it. Don't get your toe caught under the edge. The toe of your boot, I mean. I won't. Uh, I've been walking boots since I was born, practically. You're from where? Nebraska? Uh, no, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, uh, Big Eagle, Oklahoma, outside Tulsa. You get blackouts in Big Angle? Electrical blackouts like this? Uh, Big Eagle? No. Not really. Uh, not too many lights to begin with, not Big Eagle. Tulsa's a big town, though. You ever been there? No, sir. Farthest west I've been is Jersey City. That's in New Jersey, just across the Hudson River. Uh, do you mind, uh, open the door for me uh, with this, uh, lantern and bag of food stuff to get the key? There you are, sir. Sweetheart. You in here somewhere? Got us some Chinese food. Good Chinese food. The best. Love Fun's the best around here. And New York has got the best Chinese food in the world. Even better than in China. At least that's what our Chinese guests tell me. I was never actually in China myself, but I guess the Chinese should know. I'm sure they'll have the lights fixed soon. The candles should last until they do. There are more candles in the desk there beside the window if you need them.
Well, the phones are working. At least they were a few minutes ago. <laughs> if you need anything else, please just call down, ask for Sean. I'd recommend, though, that you stay in the room until the power comes on again. New York is not Oklahoma, you know. <laughs> there are plenty of people who take advantage of a situation like this one. You know what I'm talking about. Thanks. We'll be all right. Uh, do you mind if I keep this uh, lantern? Uh, bird, I mean? Well, sure, no problem. Listen, they'll have this fixed before you finish your dinner. Well, uh, come back and get the lantern you need it or anyone else does. We got plenty. Don't worry. Enjoy your dinner, folks. It's like being inside a Christmas tree, isn't it? Like sitting on one of the branches, surrounded by ornaments. Yeah. I see what you mean. This is something, though, isn't it? Come all the way to New York. The city alliance. And there ain't none. <laughs> oh, but maybe that's Paris, the city alliance. Well, Broadway anyway. The Great White Way. Only well, now it's black. Or is that London has the Great White Way? Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, when I was out getting the Chinese, people were. Run home, they were they were bumping into one another. It was a lucky thing that I got into the Chinese restaurant when I did too, because as soon as the lights quit, those guys ran the front door and they locked it. Them Chinese fellows weren't taking no chances. They're real polite to me though. They apologized for taking a little longer than they said it was ordinary for my order. Didn't charge me no tax. At least I said they were. The man went to the front door, unlocked it, and let me out. He said, be careful, hurry, be careful. Danny. We're not in China. New York. We're in New York. Why did you speak Chinese to that man? What man? The doctor that was here before. That was 
the bellboy. We're seeing the doctor tomorrow. Remember. And you know I can't speak Chinese. Barely get by an American. Don't be so modest. You know Spanish, too? Yeah. Just about 25 words, maybe like uh, huevos rancheros and uh, buena suerte. Si todo sigue igual. What's that? What's that mean? All things being equal. It's an expression. You know what an expression is, Danny. Don't try to fool me. Well, I, the last thing I try to do is fool you, sweetheart. You know that I, I care more for you than anything in the world. There's fooling around, and then there's trying to fool. Fooling around's what we always done best, I don't you think? You still like to fool around with your old daddy, don't you? <laughs> Even after all these years. It has been a long time. Hasn't it, Danny? Almost 17 years. Lord, it's warm. It's warm. in the dark. But I could sure use some air cool. Could we be on Lake Osage? We're back home. Could know it. Wouldn't you like that, darling? We're back home, lying in the canoe, looking up at the stars on Lake Osage. Is it a Chinese doctor? The one I'm seeing tomorrow. He's Chinese. This Chinese. Only thing is Chinese is this food that's waiting for us to eat here in this bag. The doctor's name is Smith. Herschel Smith. He's a specialist, honey. He'll know what to do. The clinic in Tulsa said Dr. Smith is the best that there is. He's expecting us tomorrow. You were away. 
When, honey, when was I away? I'm not sure. You were, though. Away in the sea of red. Oh. Red Sea, you mean, when I was in the Navy? Oh, of course. When you said Lake Osage, I thought of it. I took a walk, and everything was just like this. There were lights on in the dark. Just small ones. Little shimmering lights. Oh. Lights on in the houses around the lake, you mean? I saw you on the other side. And I shouted, Danny! Danny! But it wasn't you. It wasn't you. Hold my fortune. Are you sure this was at Lake Osage? It jumped straight up out of the black water and spoke to me. You never told me this before, honey. You'd think I was crazier than I already am. I don't think you're crazy. I don't know what to call it, but it's not crazy. Maybe Dr. Smith has a name for it. A fish, by any other name, is still a fish. Even if it's Chinese? Definitely. If it's Chinese. Well, so would this fish tell you? About the children. What about them? All about them. Their names, their hair color the shapes of their noses. What children do I have? Ours. Yours and mine, Danny. All of them. How many? Six. Six altogether. Do you really want to know? Honey, I got no place to go. Not without you, anyway. 
Danny, you were always the sweetest child. You were one of them. One of who? The six children. You were first. The largest. With red hair and blue eyes. The rest were girls. Five perfect girls. Each one of them had brown hair and brown eyes and brown skin. They looked like fawns. Danny, these are our children. Don't you recognize them? I love you, Di. I, I've loved you since I was five and you were three. 17 years and I love you more than ever. I know, Danny. You did have a child. Daddy Junior. Damn, Bob. That's right. Dan. Dan Buck. Call him Dan Buck. You remember what happened to Dan Buck? Not really. She do. He was two. Two years old. How old is he now? Two. Can't get any older. Might have gone in the Navy, Danny. Like you did. Might have. I wouldn't have wanted him to go sailing in the Sea of Red. Sailors don't come back from there sometimes. I came back. I'm here. Damn box spot. Dan Bug's gone, baby. He drowned in the sea of red. He drowned in Lake Osage. Pretty sentence died. The five fawns are fine. That Chinese fish was sure right about them. I'm sure he ain't half wrong most of the time. It hasn't been that long. No. I know this isn't China, Danny. But I, I think I'd like to go sometime. Well, that's not impossible. You ready to eat? Yeah. Remember Rinky Dink, Dan? What happened to him? Yeah, I, I do. Woman who was driving never looked in her side view, she said. Just the rear view mirror. 
knocked him sideways off his motor bicycle into the road, right in the path of oncoming traffic. Patrolman said, Rinky Dink's head hit the ground just an instant before that Buick run over his back. He was an okay boy. Okay. He had a three-inch scar that ran across his forehead that filled with red whenever he laughed or was angry. Remember? The car that crushed him didn't leave a mark. There was only a light bruise on his forehead that would never heal. When Bonnie saw him in the coffin, she said, why, he looks cuter now than ever. Yeah. When uh, I got out of the Navy for uh, came back to Oklahoma, I went and visited a guy I'd met in boot camp. We'd kept a correspondence going. He was living in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo range of mountains. His name was Famine McCoy. He reminded me of Rinky Dink. Or Rinky Dink reminded me of him. I forget which. Anyway, we were uh, riding out uh, on some back road in this truck, and uh, we got stuck in a rut. And we looked around for some timber uh, to get some traction, and all we found was this stiff, dead dog on the other side of the road. So we, we uh, shoved it under the wheel, and we rocked right out of there. When we got back to the town, um, Bamman said to this feller that he knew how he'd felt real guilty about uh, abusing that dead dog's body and all. And the guy said, don't worry about it. That's what the dog's body's there for. People use it all the time. Oh, what, what kind of a name is that? Famine? I asked him about that. His real name was Dave, I think. He got real famous for uh, showing up at people's doorsteps in his neighborhood before he went off to the Navy. He'd go out every evening with his nose up, sniffing, just like a dog casing garbage cans. He'd prowl around the neighborhood, and he'd smell for who was cooking what. And then, because he knew everybody in the neighborhood, he could figure out just what it was that he was going to eat that evening. And knock on people's doors, and he'd act like he was just visiting, and then he'd just don't mind if I do his way into a free meal. So it was his neighbors that nicknamed him Famine. But uh, we kept a correspondence going for a couple of years after that. For a while. And he wrote me that he lost an eye in some work-related accident. And he moved down to Florida, got himself a wife, a kid, and then she wrote me that he had died. And it seems that he was out in the Palmettos and he felt this sharp jab, and he looked around to see what had happened, but uh, he couldn't find anything, so he, uh, he forgot about it, and he went home, and that night he started feeling real strange. And he, he acted sick, so his wife took him to the hospital. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. They left him to go home, and two hours later he was dead. Uh, it seems a snake bit him, and if they had just known about that jab, if he'd told them what it was, they could have saved him, but he didn't tell them. It didn't occur to Fam until just a little while before he faded away that it wasn't just a palmetto leaf that had stuck him. Yeah. Poor 
or famine. It makes me hungry sometimes to think about it. My mother closed the bedroom door. What door? My door! That's what it sounded like when she closed it. I'd never allow her to put damn bug to bed. I didn't want him to get frightened that way. Dan Bug could sleep through anything. He used to like to watch the lightning with me. The double bolt, the ground lightning like we get in Oklahoma. I am not drunk, Dan. I haven't had one drink since you've been away. Not one. It was Bonnie who made me, wanted me to go out. But I just watched them. I had cranberry juice and soda water, that's all. We were at the Cherokee. And there was a good band there. Played a lot of old stuff. Made me cry, because you were away. I was sitting on the toilet after I peed, crying because I missed you. And Bonnie was in there with Rinky Dink drinking. Now, they offered me some, but you know me and drinks is not on friendly terms, so I declined. All it took was that woman's small miscalculation. And Rink was dust. I wasn't anywhere, Di. I wasn't away. Oh, yes, you were. You were, too. You were off sail in the Sea of Red. Do you know how it hurts your eyes to stare at the horizon? If you stare at the horizon long enough, all you can see is fire. The entire line of the horizon is burning. 
fires as far as the eyes can see. Stop pretending, Di. I am here. I wasn't anywhere. I am here. <laughs> Danny. Danny, can you keep a secret? Sure. When we go to see this doctor tomorrow, the, the doctor, what's his name? Dr. Smith, Dr. Herschel Smith. Yeah. When we go to see Dr. Smith tomorrow, let's not tell him about Dambug, okay? <laughs> can, we, can we just forget about Dambug? I think Dr. Smith already knows about Danbug. He talked with the people at the clinic in Tulsa. They sent him your medical records. That's how come he agreed to see you. I already told you that, honey. I told you that before we left home. <laughs> Gee, Danny, it's so dark in here. It's so hot. And and it's raining. And there isn't any moon. It's kind of beautiful, though, the dark. Don't you think, Danny? I could get used to this. That's spooky. Spooky? The phone. It rang once, then it quit. Maybe it was a signal. What kind of signal? A message. Nobody knows we're here, Di. I mean, I didn't tell anybody what hotel we're staying in. Somebody rang the wrong room, that's all. Hello? As for you. Hello? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is dark in here. It's very, very dark in here. We have candles, though. Mm-hmm.
No, I, I never have. I'm sure it's not. Yes, yes, Danny went out and got us some Chinese food. You're very kind. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope so. Yes, thank you, we will. Bye. Who was it? Dr. Smith. He was very sweet. The clinic must have told him where we were staying. Well, what'd he say? Oh, he... He just wanted to make sure we were okay during the blackout. He, he just wanted to make sure we were comfortable and had food. And that must have been him the first time, too. The line was messed up. I could hear someone talking, but uh, the connection was bad, <laughs> full of static. He just wanted to assure me, he said, that he was looking forward to our visit tomorrow. He has a nice voice, Danny. He has a good voice. I'm glad. I couldn't live without you, Danny. I, I really couldn't. Jesus, Dad. You're burning up. I didn't tell you everything about the fawns. The fawns? You know the five fawns. What about them, honey? They have names. Did you name them? Of course I did, Danny. Don't pretend you don't know. I am pretending, I What did you call them? And Bug drowned, didn't he? Yes, honey, he did. Do you recall how it happened? You and me was in an intimate way. Down on the shore of Lake Osage. We thought the boy was asleep. But he got up went into the water without making any sound we could hear. By the time we found him, he was gone.
It was a long time ago. Two years. Not so long. It's a good thing that you can talk about it, though, Di. If you couldn't, I'd probably lose you all together. Me and the five balls. Yeah. Them also. That night I was in the Cherokee. The night Rinky Dink was killed. Bonnie said something. What'd she say? Oh, she was drunk, I guess. But I heard her say to Peggy Worth how it was. Uh, some people just don't deserve to have kids. And you figured she was mean you. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it to heart right away. But then after it turned out I couldn't get pregnant again, I started in on it meaning something. There was no way I could get it out of my head. It, it just stuck in my brain like a knife. It got so bad, I asked them about the Tulsa Clinic. Could they just do an operation, get that knife out of there? It ain't been easy on me neither, Ty. You drifting in and out. Though, I suppose, give me a purpose in life since the accident. Keeping you from getting away from yourself altogether. I have to admit, I've been feeling a little desperate as of late. It's a damn hard thing to take feeling useless. You don't have a useless bone in your body, Danny. I'll tell everyone we know. If it weren't so damn hot, I'd kiss you. Kiss me anyway. Look at that, Di. Whole city's lit up. Danny! Metro Gold.